Gary Lineker loves diversity. Britain wouldn't be Britain uh -uh. without refugees. No just not in his own backyard. The insufferably woke TV presenter has been demanding open borders for a decade while living in some of the least diverse areas of the UK possible. First buying a mansion in Esher, Surrey, which has a white population comfortably higher than the national average. But to be fair, he did then move to ethnically diverse London. Oh wait, no, my bad. He moved to Barnes, which is one of the very least ethnically diverse areas of London. For Gary, it's very much a case of do as I say, not as I do. Now the multi-millionaire metropolitan Metropolitan elitist is inflicting his opinions about mass immigration on the British public yet again, with the pathetically weak Tory government finally suggesting it might do something to stop the deluge of boat migrants entering the country by passing a law that would bar them from claiming asylum in the UK, then deporting them. But Gary isn't best pleased. Our asylum system has been overwhelmed, but if you come here illegally, you will not be able to stay. Good heavens, this is beyond awful! Good heavens, you don't want random fighting age men from North Africa and the Middle East just rocking up on boats and then running off into the nearest town. How awful! Or better yet, being given a free taxi service, free four-star hotel room, free cash, free healthcare, no questions asked. That's beyond awful! There is no huge influx. Yeah, we just took in 1.1 million migrants in a single year. An increase of 435,000 on the previous year. Part of a multi-decade soaring trend. 16.8% of the population of England and Wales is now foreign born. Major cities like Manchester, Birmingham and London are now minority white British. On some days, a thousand or more boat migrants cross the channel. Hotels so chronically overflowing with them, the government is having to put them in disused military bases. But according to Gary, that's not a huge influx. We need more, just not anywhere near where he lives. This is an immeasurably cruel policy directed at the most vulnerable people in language that is not dissimilar to that used by Germany in the 1930s. The most vulnerable people. They're getting on boats in France. The vast majority are young men, economic migrants, not refugees. Pointing out that basic fact doesn't make someone a Nazi, Gary. Lineker got some backlash, then immediately started whining about it. Great to see the freedom of speech champions out in force this morning demanding silence from those with whom they disagree. Calling out your brain-dead babble isn't silencing you, Gary. Who's silencing you? You've been on your soapbox spouting the same drivel since 2015. Don't go away, there's more on this, but first a word from our video sponsor. So I've had Scott Mannion on my podcast. I've been on his show, he's a mate, and he's done the hard yards with his YouTube channel. It's quality content, and its main focus is traditional restoration. He deciphers the essence of Anglo-Saxon and Anglo-American values and virtues using the myth, tradition, symbol and law that forged English civilization. Scott Host talks with traditional new right thinkers, conservatives, subversives, dissidents, and analyzes English verse, ritual, and story to uncover what he calls lost psycho technologies that can solve today's problems. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, we need to lift up talent on our side and get him to over 10,000 subs. So pause the video right now. Don't forget to come back to it though. Come on, it only takes a few seconds. Scroll down to the description and his pinned comment. Click on his YouTube channel and subscribe. Five, four, three, two, one. Boom! That's it. Simple as. Now back to the video. I have never known such love and support in my life than I'm getting this morning. I want to thank each and every one of you. It means a lot. Oh, piss off. Stop pretending your demented opinion represents the consensus view of the reasonable majority. It doesn't. We just had a poll last month where a plurality of supporters of left-wing parties think immigration to the UK is too high. A new poll this week shows 50% of the public support banning boat migrants from being able to claim asylum compared to 36% who oppose. So no, Gary, your dumb, reductive, glib hot take on mass migration isn't some kind of populist clarion call. It's a vacuous echo chamber talking point of the moneyed elite, the nowhere people. The only segment of society that benefits from mass migration. I'll continue to try and speak up for those poor souls that have no voice. Cheers all. Poor souls? You mean the four out of ten boat migrants coming from Albania, a country not even at war, a significant chunk of whom get here then go on to become career criminals and drug dealers. Poor souls! Yeah, they really look poor and downtrodden while filming their fancy free four-star hotel rooms on their brand new iPhones, don't they? <laughs> poor souls! Poor souls like Salman Abadi rescued 
as a refugee from Libya before going on to blow himself and a bunch of kids up at the Manchester Arena. Oh, poor soul. The endless cases of teenage girls being sexually harassed outside schools by these poor souls. Don't forget, this is the same guy who fronted NGO mass migration propaganda, saying Britain should fling its borders open even wider because fish and chips exist. Britain wouldn't be Britain without fish and chips, a national institution, a culinary delight. Oi, Gary, have you ever thought about where I actually come from? Well, I suppose not. You've got refugees to thank for me. Yeah, some French dude decided to put battered fish together with chips 200 years ago. So I guess we just have to lay out the red carpet for Abdul and all his mates from Afghanistan. Funnily enough, it was another refugee who decided to bring me and Fishface together back in the 1860s. It's true. A guy called Joseph Malin opened the nation's first ever fish and chip shop. Aside from the small problem that this is factually incorrect, it was almost certainly Lancashire's John Lees who opened the first fish and chip shop in Britain. But anyway, Joseph Malin was a legal immigrant. He didn't just jump on a boat paid for by criminal people smugglers and illegally enter the country, did he? Hello. You're right. But what do facts matter to Gary? This is the same guy who claimed these 40-year-old men were child refugees and anyone who claimed otherwise was just a racist bigot. Lineker gets paid £1.35 million a year by the BBC, much of it funded by the onerous BBC licence fee, which is bullied out of the taxpayer. Under the BBC's own guidelines, their employees aren't allowed to express overtly political statements, which Gary does a lot. Like, a hell of a lot. But if you're waiting for him to be disciplined or fired, don't hold your breath. Because the BBC only disciplines or fires people who express political views that counter leftist narratives. Like David Bellamy, who they unceremoniously dumped because he was critical of climate change dogma. The BBC won't sack Gary Lineker because the elites agree with him. Gary will continue to lecture the British people about how racist they are for wanting sane border controls to maintain the identity of their country. While he lives in the whitest pocket of multi-millionaire suburban luxury and privilege that money can buy. Safely shielded from the impact of the policies he demands be inflicted on everyone else. Britain wouldn't be Britain uh -uh. without refugees. No.